Hello, hello there. I am Determined Tell Maniac, and you happen to be someone watching this this broadcast. Hello there, and today we're going to be talking about a very simple condition I have called Dermatillomania, obviously. You know, it's the name of my channel, The Dermatillomaniac, and I've been, you know, I've been trying to tell people, like, what is Dermatillomania, you know? And, um... You know, the thing is, with dermatillomania, like, you see all these scars, and even this one's got bitten up a little bit. These, it's a scratching, uh, scratching disorder, right? So I scratch my skin, and it's a psychological obsession, right? So my mind is inherently obsessive about things, right? I love geography, uh, I love, like... I used to, I still watch, like, running content on YouTube. I still watch traveling. Like, I, I watch all the stuff on YouTube and stuff. And then I put my assessments in those things. Uh, economics, I have 20 economics books. I have every one in my back of my car, right? I assess about, like, all this stuff, right? Here's, here's one of my economics books right here. Applied economics, right? I obsess about all this stuff. Oh, applied economics, right? I, I obsess about all this stuff, right? Despite my obsession with all, with all this stuff, there's a negative to that obsession, and it's a psychological thing. It's a need that's not being fulfilled. And when it's not being fulfilled, I start scratching my skin. And that's another obsession of mine. And it's just, there are days where I, just, I wake up and I feel a little bit ashamed of myself for doing it. And uh, I don't know how to explain it. And it's it gets me in a cycle where I don't want to go anywhere now because it just... You know, I, uh, it's like a cycle of shame. I do it because I'm a, because people question me when I'm, you know, when I'm at work and like I don't want to go anywhere else when I'm on the weekends. You know, I don't do anything because of my skin picking disorder. But at the same time, it causes me to scratch more because of people people tell me that my skin looks like garbage. So it's like it's like a self fulfilling self fulfilling cycle. It wasn't originally caused by depression or whatever, but it or not depression, but like the self shame, or um, it just turned into that uh, the cycle of shame. And it's a very interesting uh, psychological look that I don't know, you, very hard for people to break it. There are people decades now with this this condition that just uh, it's not really curable from what I've read online. I mean, you could have some of the best cream in the world, it's not, a, it's not an itchiness. I mean, it. It becomes it. starts out itchy, but then you just you still obsess about it. I mean, there are nights where I'm just I I'm not even sleeping with scratch in my skin. It just calms me down. It's just like you know, it's just hard to stop. You know, uh, and uh, it's just a weird addiction. You know, it's it's worse than drugs because at least drugs there's a physical substance there. Skin, the substance is on you. It's. It's a weird addiction, and I wish there was a way I could stop it, but it's just, it's very, very difficult. And I named myself Dermatillomaniac, or, you know, Intermerium, because, because of this condition. Because of the, uh, the shame that I have. Now, I rarely do videos on psych psychology. I do mass psychology videos, but not, like, individual psychology. Like, I never really talk about autism, or dyslexia or just dis I did talk a little bit of dyspraxia on this YouTube channel before but I haven't really talked about all the other ones and I think it would be very interesting if we could go over some of those conditions maybe do do a little research and see if if there's any other conditions that are like because I feel like with dermatillomania anyway the skin scratching disorder it is related to uh, I've heard some people say it's related to OCD some people say it's related to Tourette's some people say it's related, which would make a lot of sense. I talk to myself a lot. Uh, you know, I don't like it when things are too quiet, I guess. Um, or it's related to, um, I mean, OCD, Tourette's. I'm thinking like, a, and it's like a system, sister disorder with some other condition. But, like, I would like to learn about the different families of, of neuropsychology, uh, neuro, neuro, um, Neurological disorders. I think that would be very interesting to find out how they're all related. Although it looks like to me the disorders are like, like, uh, for instance, dyspraxia and autism have like an eighty percent correlation. People, well, 
at least from people of autism, 80% of the time they have dyspraxia. That's not necessarily for, true for dyspraxics. Dyspraxics are about 40% autistic or whatever. But what's funny is they impact the same region of the brain, dyspraxia and autism. So it makes sort of, it does sort of make sense. Um, autism is more based on emotional aspect and sometimes they're slower in activity, but dyspraxia is more about the 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 uh, movement of activity. It's more processing that. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but that's basically the best way I could explain it. But I just love to learn about these different types of neurological disorders. I know I'm not an expert in the field. I much rather read about economics than than a so you know psychological things. But you know this is something I really like. Now Thomas Sowell. A lot of people disagree with him. He uh, there's some things I disagree with him on, like. You know, not everything I'm going to agree with every economist on that I read. I'm sure it's the same way with psychology. I, and a lot of, I feel like a lot of it's bunk, though. Uh, you look at the psychological industry, we, we spent, uh, when you look at economics, right? And you look at what psychologists have done for the society, they've ultimately been a net drain on society. We spent a trillion dollars in the last 60 years, and guess what's happened? Single parenthood has gone up, prisons have gone up when it comes to people being raised by single parents um not the violent crime rate has gone down uh since the 90s for the most part it spiked up in the 2020s though because of reasons we're not going to get into but for the most part violent crime has gone down but all, everything else has gone up psychologically loneliness has gone up depression has gone up medications have gone up to fix the the, the depression all the things that are, that are messed up in society. So I would love to learn about these psychological disorders and seeing if they have anything to do with with the depression, with, which 90% of it's probably made up anyway. A lot of these people are probably making up these disorders. But it would be very interesting to see, you know, wh what it is that is causing this mass loneliness, loneliness academic academic i think though it has something to do a lot with the internet uh when you have people who are driven by instinct instead of reason which most people are driven by instinct including me by the way i really think logically about most of the things i do i'm more driven on instinct um you you have inherently broken people behind the that computer screen you know you have people driven by instinct you know just in a small town setting with no internet you're going to see the flaws a lot quicker than somebody behind a computer screen. And that creates a false sense of security for a lot of people. And eventually, it will lead to the entire social security system collapsing. Because every social security number is now on the internet for anyone to buy. Uh, but yeah, just... It, it's very, very interesting to me that um, I feel like we should be studying neurosci neuroscience to some extent. But we spent so much money studying it already that I think we should spend it more efficiently than spending it, you know, less efficiently or whatever. But or more money to it. So I would love to learn about. I I, I do. I would like to. I made a whole video on like inequality and dating. And I would like to bring in to that too. Um, how it's not. It's not one person's. It's both, right? Um, like for instance, right. So people say they want equality, but they're not willing to accept all the responsibilities that come with equality, right? So for instance, people say, let's say it's uh, women or another group of people. They'll just, let's just say, claim it's a group of people that rarely get represented in a certain industry. Let's say they want to be engineers, right? Engineering is a very safety-oriented field. If you don't do the math correctly on one thing, the entire bridge collapses, structure collapses and takes and in order to have that responsibility you also need some leadership as well the thing is women or any group of people for that matter that want equality but don't understand how to achieve it they will they will force people to bring them the leadership but then at the same time defer that responsibility on other people and i'm starting to see it too in my job too there is no accountability at my job the higher ups don't do not talk to the lower ups. They might talk to the mill managers, but they don't talk to the lower ups. They don't talk to the likes of you and I. And that's an interesting correlation. Everything is a hierarchy. I mean, in society, you cannot get rid of hierarchy. Uh, I think even my brothers probably know that. 
but my brothers think you can reduce hierarchy with government. I disagree. I don't think you can. I think the government's a necessary evil, but I don't think that you can... I don't think abolishing government's going to fix the problem, but I don't think string it either. I think the best course of action is to limit the government slowly over time, chip away at some restrictions, because my brother will say... Um, I don't know why we're going on this random tangent again, but my brother will say, oh, the railroad industry is not regulated. And I look up the three regulatory agencies for the for the railroads. Oh, the air- airline making industry is not regulated, right? You know, what was it? Um, this is one company makes uh, makes airplanes and they start falling apart and then people surprisingly would die from the company. Uh, Airbus, and that wasn't Airbus, it was one of the other ones. And then I looked them up. There's three airline industries that are regulating the building of aircraft. So to me, it's it's not the, not a regulation. If there's three regulatory agencies for one thing, one thing, it's clearly how they're being enforced. It's not as any. They already have the enforcement. They just need to apply the enforcement. They don't apply it equally on certain companies, and that's the problem. It's like you've already given the. You don't reward more power to people who haven't used the power. To, to give responsibility to other people. You don't give them more power. It's all a power play that the government does. My brothers and psychologists do that too. So we should never be studying these disorders just for a power play for this government or for any university for that matter that's tied to government. Um, you know, We should be really studying autism, studying dyslexia, studying dyspraxia, studying dermatomania, although it's not related to those that much. Studying those conditions, um, or even like central auditory processing disorder, which I believe I have, I definitely probably do. There's times when listening to someone talk, uh, I could barely understand what they're saying, but then most people understand what they're saying. I'm like, what the heck? Uh, and then like, I'm like processing, and it's a completely different word from what they said. Like, I don't know how I got that word. So, like, that's the thing. Like these. These conditions are very interesting to me. I wish somebody would make like a Venn diagram. I I saw one Venn diagram I saw a few years ago on it. But I want to see more diagrams like that. I would love to see the neuro... Like I, I see Venn diagrams sometimes with economics. And I'm fascinated by them as well. I wish more people would do that as well. But people don't care about these fields. They care more about sports ball or weird weird things. They don't, they don't care about geography. They don't care about government structure. They don't care about all this weird stuff that I like to talk about. The deferment of responsibility to the legislative branch, to the executive branch, to the United States government. No one cares about that. But I, I would love to study that. You know, it's something I love to do. I would, maybe I should make videos on that, those topics. But I just, I feel like for me, I'm so lazy that I haven't done that yet. Um, uh, it's more me being lazy than not to, I just not, I've just not been doing it. I should do it. But yeah, dermatomania, it, it, it creates a cycle of shame. Um, I, I wanted to explain my obsessions so I can also explain why I'm obsessed with my skin. I don't think I did a very good job on it, but it was very interesting nonetheless. I'll never truly understand why I scratch my skin. I don't think most, dermatoma- most dermatomaniacs understand that, why they do it. But in order for it to be an actual condition, it needs to be about four spots on the skin, and they need to be, most of the time, open wounds. And that would be considered somebody with dermatomania. And I definitely have more than four spots where I'm just constantly scratching at the same few places. Uh, my arms, my my back, I scratch everywhere. I mean, I, I have probably spots all over my legs, too. It's just, it's not a very fun disorder. Uh, I now have stuff on my hands now I'm starting to scratch that because I've been working I, I develop all these stuff on my hands so I should stop scratching my hands as much start scratching my legs and arms again my arms I actually don't my legs I don't scratch as much because they're not available to me I'm always wearing long pants and uh, I try not to hurt myself on my legs but like yeah you know with dermatomania it's it's a fascinating condition, and I wonder if it has anything to do with my my obsessions about certain things. I wonder if it has anything to do with that. I'm sure it, it probably does. I'm sure there's some psychologist that would probably tell me that, but I don't know. Um, again, there's you know, 
I'm going to stay on this planet for as long as I can, even with the cycle of shame that I have above my head. Uh, I don't I don't care. I'm going to stay on this planet until I die, until, until something takes me out, you know. Whether it be a crazy person or a car crash or a tornado, like, you know, I just die until, I, you know, I just live until I die, I guess, you know. I don't worry about things anymore. I stopped worrying about things a while ago. You know? Car breaks down. Oh, well, I guess I won't... Well, I guess I won't drive into work that day. I don't care. Nobody... I don't really care that much. You know? Uh, am I a little upset? Yeah. But, you know, I can stay and play video games. Have the same enjoyment as working. So, I don't really care. I don't really care anymore. Why should I... Why should I even accept responsibility when there's no accountability for anybody at my job? Well, there's any, there's no accountability for anybody in the, in the world, really, at this point. Like today, I know this is kind of off topic from, from the ad point of the video, but today, I had the right of way, I had a green arrow on the left-hand turn. Guess what? There were three cars that making a right turn. The guy behind me starts honking his horn. Hey, buddy, why are you stopped? Honking his horn like a rude person he is. I'm thinking to myself, this... Like, do you understand? Maryland drivers have this mentality where if there's a guy who makes a right turn, they think it's automatically safe to go for the next person to go. They don't stop at the stop sign if there's already a person there making that right turn. They just go and be right behind him. So I was stopped waiting, even though I had the right of way with my green arrow. I was stopped because I wanted to make sure all those three cars got got on that right turn. But that, that honker made the situation a little more, a little more tense. I wish he wouldn't have because it would have been better if he was just slowed down like me and just waited for the three cars who were not in the right of way to do, go do their stupid crap that they were going to do anyway. But, you know, that's not right here they're there. That is a perfect example of the flaws of, of humanity. Humans are driven by instinct. They're not driven by reason. That's a perfect example of that. Humans are not are not unlimited and they're not fixed they are flawed very very flawed there are very few almost perfect humans in this world uh, you know people are in and people I love to talk to people don't get me wrong I, I can take people in short doses but after 10 minutes I don't want anything to do with you after that you're you're only I'm only there to use you as a condom and then once you're once you're used you're used you know what I mean you're a condom to me like, why should I care? I already... You're, you're a used condom. You're just on the ground. There's probably fluids leaking all over the floor. That's what a human is to me. They're not real people to me. They're my little playthings, my play toys. So, you know, maybe that's what the average dermatomaniac thinks. I know it's kind of a strange thing to think about, but if someone's going to honk their horn, there might as well just be a plaything at that point. They might as well just be a little used condom. You know? You know, you come into work, you say, Hello, used condoms. Or broken condoms. <laughs> That's you say. You know, you go to work, you say that to people. It might be insulting, but it's funny. You know, that's why I can't take people for long t periods of time. I just can't. It drives me insane. I love to talk to people for 10 minutes at a time. I don't want to talk to you after 10 minutes. You know? Unless you have an incredibly interesting story. It's, uh, yeah, I don't want to interact with you for more than 10 minutes. It's just, it's just, that's the true reality of the situation on hand. Anyway, I'm the Dermatillomaniac. You happen to be the Intermerium, my federation of uh, followers. Uh, goodbye.